Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a detection of what seems to be one of the most important gravitational wave events we've ever seen, and it was actually just detected a few days ago from when I'm making this video. An event that we still know very little about, and the event that might change our understanding of the universe once again. And so let's discuss this event that you can learn about in some of the links in the description, and talk about what all of this means and why this is so important. But first, just a little bit of history, just so that you understand why this is important. And while the history here is surprisingly short, because the first detection of gravitational waves only happened just under 10 years ago. The event known as GW150914 was the first official confirmation that gravitational waves are real and black holes can indeed collide with one another and produce spacetime disturbances predicted by Einstein over a hundred years ago. But within just two years, something else even more important was discovered 140 million light years away from us. This was GW170817, and it was the first time ever gravitational waves also coincided with something else, actual electromagnetic emissions visible by different telescopes. Because in this case, we actually discovered the first ever neutron star collision that produced what's known as a kilonova, and this was a tremendous event. It actually led to some tremendous discoveries, such as, for example, discoveries of how a lot of atoms seem to be produced, but much more importantly, it was a confirmation that what's known as multi-messenger astronomy can definitely work. In other words, it's possible to observe astronomical events by using completely different telescopes. In this case, by observing gravitational waves and electromagnetic emissions. And here, some of the first signals visible in gamma rays arrived to our planet approximately 1.7 seconds after the gravitational waves. Intriguingly, this unusual delay resulted in some important discoveries in cosmology, including discoveries in regards to dark matter. As a matter of fact, this was actually one of the biggest proofs that dark matter might be real and ideas like MOND may not be entirely correct. And that's because the MON hypothesis predicted that gravitational waves would be traveling much, much slower. But what's even more intriguing is that, even after the gamma ray observations, additional signals were detected from the galaxy NGC 4993, visible to a lot of different telescopes, including optical telescopes, as you see in this image. So here everything was observed literally in real time. But unfortunately, for the past eight years now, nothing like this happened again. As a matter of fact, Almost 3,500 candidates have been discovered and 195 have been officially confirmed. This is on February of 2025, by the way. But out of all of these candidates and detections, only one of them was basically multi-signal. Everything else was only visible as a gravitational wave. And that's despite the fact that we've seen a lot of different things collide over time. Different types of black holes of different types of masses, some of which scientists still have trouble explaining. We've also seen collisions between a black hole and a neutron star, two neutron stars, and even objects that were somewhat difficult to explain. You can learn about some of these events in some of the videos in the description. But something very unusual happened on the 6th of February 2025. Something nobody expected, and something we still have trouble explaining. This was initially reported by Fabian Schusler on one of the astronomy forums, but you can also find the details in one of the links from the GRACE database, the database for various gravitational wave detectors. This is actually created automatically. Now at first, this didn't really look unusual. It appeared as a typical gravitational wave coming from a distance of over 1.1 billion light years away from us. And based on the signal, this was determined to be potentially a neutron star black hole collision, maybe a binary neutron star, or maybe there's a slight chance that this was just a terrestrial signal. And so here, whatever collided had an overall much lower mass. No more than five solar masses. Actually, quite likely, much lower. But completely independently of this, within just a few minutes of this event, there was actually an unusual alert from something entirely different. Here, there was an alert from the Ice Cube Neutrino Observatory in Antarctica, an enormous facility whose schematic you see right here that uses thousands of these unusual digital optical modules to detect neutrinos. We've discussed this facility in one of the videos in the description, and you can basically learn about how it operates. And it turns out that there was a detection of neutrinos coming from this location within approximately five minutes after the initial gravitational waves have passed. Which makes this a super exciting event because this is the first time ever we've actually connected physical particles, in this case neutrinos, to a space-time disturbance such as a gravitational wave. This has never been seen before and this is sort of groundbreaking for cosmology. And so the obvious question here would be, 
Okay, so what exactly happened, and what produced these neutrinos, and of course, the gravitational waves. Now right now we don't really know, and it's actually too early to tell, but here a lot of these questions could be resolved if we also detected some kind of an electromagnetic wave or some kind of an emission in other frequencies. And guess what? Two days after this initial detection, something else was discovered in some of the other data from a completely different telescope. And this is where things get super exciting for astronomers and a lot of cosmologists. Turns out there was also potentially a fast radio burst, detected by a Canadian telescope specifically designed to study fast radio bursts. This is a facility known as Canadian Hydrogen Intensity Mapping Experiment, also known as CHIME, that's been exceptionally successful at discovering a lot of different FRBs. Now, if you've never heard of FRBs before, it's one of the biggest mysteries in astronomy right now, and once again, some of the videos in the description talk about this a little bit more. And well, it turns out that this event potentially also produced an FRB. This too was detected around the same time frame, possibly about 50 seconds after gravitational waves, and this too seems to have come from the same location. The chance for these three events to be basically separate events, all coming from the same spot in the night skies, is extremely low. So right now, the neutrinos, the FRB and the gravitational waves are believed to be the same event. And though once again not much is known about this event yet, since FRBs have previously been connected to neutron stars, and specifically magnetars, here this might be one of the potential hints to what actually happened. This could have been a collision involving some kind of a magnetar or a neutron star with extremely powerful magnetic fields. But obviously only time will tell because right now there is really no studies, no analysis and no explanations yet, and everything, for now at least, is just a speculation. Either way though, whatever happened here is now officially one of the most important gravitational wave detections in the last 10 years. And not only because we detected neutrinos, also because we detected an FRB. Which essentially means we might finally have a chance to solve several mysteries at once and discover a little bit more about the universe in the process. It will definitely take some time to actually analyze all of this and to provide conclusive evidence to what exactly happened here, but this is one of the most important multi-messenger events, just as important as that Kilonova from 2017, but possibly even more important because of that fast radio burst. But I guess what's really interesting is that even now we have absolutely no idea what happened here. I mean, for all we know, maybe this was just some kind of a bizarre event on top of a magnetar, as predicted by some of the other studies involving magnetars basically having these major star quakes, or maybe this was some kind of a completely new event we never even knew existed. Which naturally means we'll come back and discuss this more in some of the future videos once we have some answers or some definitive explanations. And so yeah, in just the last 10 years, this field of gravitational wave detections has advanced so much and helped us understand the universe in ways we could never imagine. As a matter of fact, in just the last few months, there's even been more propositions on how we can potentially detect gravitational waves by even using minute deviations in the magnetic field of planet Earth, because as gravitational waves pass through planet Earth, they actually do produce very small deviations in this field that end up producing very specific radio emissions, something that in theory could help us detect even more of these waves, helping us uncover even more mysteries. And then we of course have LISA, the enormous gravitational wave detector that's going to be operational in 2035, that's going to be orbiting the solar system and will help us uncover so much more. And so for gravitational wave sciences, the next 10 years look extremely promising. Which means that we'll come back and discuss a lot of these discoveries and very likely a lot of solutions to a lot of mysteries that currently cannot be explained. And so until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.